I'm hadoukening and shoryukening all over the place. Russ, I finally get it now. Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be reviewing the Ambernick RG Arc. Ambernick sent me this device for review, so thank you to them. But as always, they have no input in what I say and they haven't seen this video ahead of time. I'm going to leave the specs up on screen for those that aren't familiar with this model. As you can probably tell, this device was modeled after the six button Genesis and Sega Saturn controllers. Now, it doesn't actually play Sega Saturn well, so it's a bit weird to go with this design, but it does play Sega Genesis really good. This device though, in my personal opinion, tops out at around PlayStation 1 for what you can play comfortably. And I mean just out of the box, no setting changes, just go ahead and play. But you can do some Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, PlayStation Portable, and some of the lighter Saturn games as well. But you would have to put in a lot of work and tweaks and settings and be patient and all of that fun stuff that come along with something that isn't meant to play those games. And with Saturn especially, you'd have to go into an extra mile to get things to work properly. There's also some other caveats that come with a device that doesn't have an actual joystick, because as you can see here, this is just the D-pad. So any games or systems that would require the addition of a joystick on top of a D-pad wouldn't run that well on here, considering that it's just mapped to a D-pad, or you can choose to map it to the stick. So you have both options available to you, but still wouldn't play that well if a game needs both. Honestly, in my mind, I'm just going to narrow it down to what this device is made for and what it does well. And that's basically everything up to PlayStation 1, as well as any fighting games that would use six buttons. And we'll show some of those off throughout the video. Now, I wasn't a Sega kid growing up. I think there was probably one kid in my entire school that had Sega products in any way, shape, or form. And so we would head there to get our fix maybe once a month and then head back home and start playing on our Super Nintendos because that's what everybody had. And also, to take this even further, I'm not a big fighting game person either. So I don't play a lot of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, or anything really that's fighting aside from Super Smash Brothers. But to be honest with you, this device actually made me want to play fighting games to the point where I actually installed Street Fighter V, connected this to the computer and used it as a controller, and I had a lot of fun doing that. That's something I never had on my 2023 bingo cards. Me enjoying fighting games. But let's back up a bit and we'll talk about what this device actually is and how much it is and all of that. The model that I have here is the D model. And this retails at 98 US dollars plus shipping. But there's also a lower model, the S model, and that's at 78 US dollars plus shipping. The main differences between the two is the D model that I have here can dual boot into Android, it has touchscreen, and it has an extra one gigabyte of RAM over the other model. The S model is Linux only. Personally, I think the pricing is a bit too expensive for what this is, and I throw this into the same category as the RGB30. It's kind of a niche device for a niche set of users for a niche specific use case. I think you would probably only grab this if the design speaks to you and you were like, hey, I really need a Genesis controller or a six button controller or a D-pad that's among the best I've ever used. Those would be the scenarios that I would look to and grab this device, but for a normal usage scenario, somebody who's new to the hobby, somebody who's looking for a first time device, I don't think this fits in really well. I think this is more of a collector's option, a more of a addition to existing handhelds that you have, not as a sole handheld. Now, the difference between the RGB30 and this is this is actually comfortable. This is super comfortable to use. And also what's pretty cool about this that I showed earlier is that you could use this on your PC as an Xbox 360 controller because that's how it shows up. So I'd probably say if you were looking at a device already like that, maybe like the 8-bit Doe M30, you could probably cross that price off of this and just consider it a two-in-one. But in my opinion, for what this device was actually made for, and that's six buttons, D-pad like this, fighting games, Genesis, all of that, I think it does it really well, and it's a really good device for that use case. Remembering again that I'm not a Sega kid, but this disc style D-pad makes fighting games just a breeze and fun to play. 
I had a lot of fun throwing out Hadoukens as I learned how to do them, Shoryukens as I figured out how to do them occasionally, and then that spinny back kick thing that you can do, which I don't remember what it's called, but you just spin and kick, and that's pretty fun. So I had a lot of fun just doing those kind of combinations. I still have no idea how to use my Mac Special, but one thing at a time. Then you have these six buttons here, and they're a joy to use. They're large, concave, they feel really good to push down, and I don't really need to do some tests or anything like that. I just know from using it over the last week or so that these are just very good buttons and they're fun to push. The triggers and buttons on the top are basically straight out of the RG353 PS line, probably the exact same as what's there, and they are just super easy and comfortable to use as well. That just kind of goes for the whole package. This is a very comfortable handheld, and it just proves that Ambrinic is kind of in a league of their own when it comes to ergonomics and comfort, because they keep putting out devices that are extremely comfortable and are made for ergonomics and design first. The curves, the indents on the back for you to hold them, and just the actual nature of the device just feel fantastic to hold. If you're curious about a size comparison, this is a big boy. It's bigger than the RG353 PS, and it's just pretty big in general. Here it is next to an OLED switch for comparison. Big boy. Otherwise, the device has HDMI out for the five people that want it, USB-C charging, headphone jack on the bottom, and the usual two SD card slots for operating system and ROMs. By the way, now is a good time for me to mention that I have a full starter setup guide already out for this device, and I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out if you happen to purchase this device. I don't think I need to make an overly long video on this. For what the use case is and what they made it for, it does it extremely well, so I think if you came here wondering if it would fit the purpose of what they made it for, the answer is yes, and it's easily a yes. Screen-wise, it's the same that we've seen on the RG405 series. So it's good for the purpose, and it's 4 inches, 640 by 480, and it works well. Sound-wise, same situation there, no concerns, sound is just fine. I do have one specific issue that's likely only my device as I spoke to other reviewers and they haven't run into it. But I get some interference or speaker crackling noise and I've seen this before on the RG351P when I installed the Wi-Fi mod where it was too close to the speakers and you would get that crackling and interference. I'm getting that on mine and it's not in something I can replicate and it's not even when the Wi-Fi is on, so I'm not exactly sure what it is, that's just kind of the sound, it's like a crackling or interference noise. But I fully expect it's just mine considering nobody else has mentioned it, so I'll likely just reach out to Ambrinic to get a replacement. On to the operating system, and this is going to be a controversial first for Joey, but I actually don't even look at or use the Android side at all. I've stayed in Linux, and that's icky for me to say, but the Linux build on this device is actually really good. There's a few things missing, like HTTP transfer, or scraping for thumbnail images, which really should be in there, but for the most part, for anybody just pick up and play this device, everything's pretty much there that you need. I can't really say that I've been missing any custom firmware at all, because I feel like I get most of it with it here, but I will say that if you were going to be using this device as your one and only device, which again isn't something I would suggest, then you might be missing the custom firmware and the options that usually come with it. But I think if you were looking at this as only a fighting game handheld, Genesis and all of that, then I don't think you would miss it at all, and I think that you would be more than fine with just the stock operating system that's on here. Now if you do want the Android side, it does need the Play Store installed, and I'll leave a link in the description to my guide for how to do that. And then after that, it's just a normal Android device. So you can add all of your emulators or use the ones that are there, add Digisho, do all of that fun stuff. And I'll leave links to the guides that I use and I've made that might help you out if you want to go down that road. So my major takeaway is the D model isn't needed at all. 
If you're not going to be going into Android, you don't need the extra RAM, you don't need the touchscreen, and you don't need Android. So I would personally suggest saving your money, stick with the S model if you are at all interested in this device. However, the one problem that comes with that is they locked certain colors to the different models. So the D models have certain colors and the S models have certain colors. So if there's a color that you really, really want, then you might have to go outside of the pricing tier. I personally wish they would not have done this because I think most of us just want to buy the color that we want and the model that we want and not have to worry about picking and choosing. And I wish they would just get rid of that. So it's one of my major gripes is I just, it would be nice to just be able to buy the color that we want and the model that we want without worrying about extra costs. Let's wrap it up here. I don't think I would have purchased this device if it wasn't sent for review. Like I said before, I wasn't a Sega kid, I'm not a fighting game person, nothing really speaks to me when I look at this device and before I got it. It was just, hey, here's another device and review it and that's the scenario. So it's a bit of a weird conflicting review for me to do because until I got it, I didn't care for it. And now that I have it, it makes me enjoy just playing fighting games on it. So I've kind of discovered a new genre of game that I wasn't really interested in before and I can point to this device as the single reason why I like them now. So that makes it a bit weird for me because it's hard for me to say, hey, maybe go spend $80 and you might like this and you might enjoy fighting games if you're in the same position that I am. Because I do think the price isn't that great. And I do think that this device is an extremely niche use case. So from that perspective, I can easily recommend this to anybody that has an affinity for Genesis controllers, Saturn controllers, Genesis as a system, fighting games, and all of that. Because the D-pad is a joy to use, the buttons are a joy to use, and this is a very comfortable and easy to hold device. I have no negatives here. But for everybody else that doesn't have that and maybe is a newcomer to the hobby, looking at this as your first device, that sort of scenario, I don't think this would be the right fit for you. I think this is a very, like I said, niche device. And so you might want to look at other options that are available. But if you do want to take a chance and you might want to see if it might have that same effect that it does on me, then yeah, you can't go wrong with this device. It's not like it's going to be something that's bad. Honestly, I really only have two major negatives for this device. The first one is it's a bit bigger than I would like, but I do like that it's very comfortable and it's using that size in a different way. Also, I really wish they would have used a better chip. A T618 chip in this device would have been perfect. I don't know why they didn't because they could have easily done that, sold it for a little bit more and would have been fine for everybody. Probably would have sold a lot more because not seeing a lot of interest in this device right now. So that's gonna be a negative for them, I think. And we'll probably see a new one at some point in the future with a better chip. But those are my two major knocks right now. Size and chip because of the performance and not being able to play Saturn, which would be a perfect thing for you to do on this device. So that's going to be it for this one. Let me know in the comments below. Is this on your radar at all? Like I said, I haven't seen a lot of interest in this at all. Compared to most other recent releases, this seems to be just going by the wayside. That doesn't surprise me considering it's a niche device, but would have expected more for an Ambernic release at least. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.